state of Hawaii has about 1.2 million people, maybe a little more, including tourists and the military, uh, primarily uh, on Oahu, about 70% of the population, but 30% are dispersed widely through the rest of the state. So we have a, an urban core, but we also have a, a widely dispersed uh, you know, population that we need to cover. We have uh, an island state. Uh, the uh, uh, topography is such that uh, we don't have mountains that reflect signals. We have vegetation that absorbs it. Uh, we have valley after valley after valley. Coverage is impossible. The public safety agencies that we serve, we serve all state agencies, and many of them are island-based, so they don't have uh, missions that take them off-island unless there's a disaster. Interoperability almost didn't exist because we had people running disparate systems in different frequency bands, VHF, UHF, uh, some in 800 NIPS pack, and uh, using every technology you could think of. So uh, there was very little interoperability. Interoperability is important for all the public safety entities and ultimately all the people who are in the government services business because in a big disaster like Hurricane Aniki, you need everybody. You need everybody from the, the dump truck operators uh, to the airport managers. Uh, all those people need to be talking to one another, clear debris, organized evacuation. So the fact that we can get everybody on the same system and have that accessible statewide so that somebody can ask for resources from their peers on a different island and understand that a bus or a, you know, a certain type of equipment has a different meaning for police and ambulance and fire and sheriffs and that they could talk to their peers just straight away is, is just an amazing thing. The open standards for communication were really vital for us because uh, we've gotten tired of being wholly owned by the system provider in selling us uh, subscriber equipment, portables and mobiles. So when we procured this system, the, one of the baselines in the specification was that whatever system was delivered would operate with any major vendor's subscriber equipment. And we actually listed uh, major vendors, including EF Johnson, and said, your system has to work with this equipment, which means you had to take out the hooks and the handles in the Project 25 specification that allowed you to customize the, the user the, uh, to your and only your equipment. So we're really proud that the EF Johnson system allows us to be vendor neutral on the subscriber equipment. We currently have uh, 12 trunk sites and 17 single channel conventional sites operating in 700 megahertz and 800 megahertz NIPS pack and those are statewide across five islands. So and we're going to we currently uh, have uh, what eight sites eight more trunk sites coming primarily on Oahu with the current purchase uh, from EF Johnson. Scaling up the system uh, from a, a small beginning to become a statewide system has not been a problem. A flat IP network has allowed us to grow this system very easily. When this system falls apart, not because of itself, but because of our communications links going down, uh, for instance, in a disaster, we could lose the connection between the east and west parts of the state. Uh, the individual sites that are disconnected from the administrative node uh, don't, don't just fall apart and go into single site trunking. It's as if you cut the system in half and it just forms two trunking systems. So you still have full functionality. Uh, the, the audio quality on the, on the Johnson uh, Phase 1 system is just outstanding. As far as working with EF Johnson, I think that the single thing has been our ability to trust them to do the right thing. And the fact that Johnson can come in and responsibly install, deliver, and make work a, a tremendous product just has really saved our bacon.